Hey guys, here we go into the uh, 11th round. The last round was a pretty good round for Jacobs. Uh, he used a lot of movement. Uh, Glovkin didn't have a lot of control of him. And he was able to win the round, in my opinion, pretty handily. Uh, let's see how the 11th round kind of shapes up for him um, after such a great round. So we got Glovkin landing a jab right there. Uh, notice how quickly he cuts the ring off too. He just he has complete control of the ring so far, and Dan Jacobs isn't able to do anything to stop him. Uh, right there, I don't think he gets any punches. Right, but um, in here, as soon as Danny ties him up, boom, he lands a big left hook on the inside. Some more slapping shots that are not punches. Um, and Golovkin's he's really open to trying to. I think he gets another hook in there. Yeah, you see his head move. And then he kind of shoves him off, you know. Clinching is a foul. Unfortunately, you know, pushing some guy off of you while he's clinching you is usually more of a foul. But but I don't have a problem with it uh, in this case. Boom. That's really beautiful right here. Uh, if we get that in slow-mo, Glovkin uses a feint, uh, gets Danny to jab. And as Danny dips his head out of the way, see, boom, he's able to catch him with a right hand while he shifts. I, I think it's even better than that. I think he starts shifting off the feint. Here we go. So he makes the first move. Danny puts his glove out to control him. It's not really a punch. Um, Glovekin gets his shift out before he starts throwing his right hand. And boom, right on the inside of the guard, uh, catches Danny with a good shot. Uh, not hurting him, you know, but it, it was a good punch nonetheless. He's uh, still no ring generalship. And that's really smart, too. I, I just want to point this out real quick. After he's done throwing this punch, he kind of pauses right here and then sees if Danny's going to have any offense. I think he's ready to uh, throw a shot. You can kind of see it a little more clearly. He kind of has like a pause right there. Uh, and then he just goes back to the center of the ring and puts Denny, you know, back in the same spot that he just escaped from. Uh, not the greatest timing right there. I think, yeah, he misses that. And then Danny eats that like cross from him and then misses all his counters. Um, controlling him with the jab. Ties him up. But Glovkin doesn't elect to rough him up here. Good jab right there. Right hand that tags him. And then I think he gets a, a right body shot here. Oh, that might have been blocked. That might have hit his arm first. Um, and then transferred down to the body. So that might be a blocked shot. I think that's all right. And then right as soon as he gets off the ropes, right, not even one second later, and Golovkin has him on. Golovkin has him on the ropes again. Uh, good body shot from from Danny right there, um, and he escapes the corner. Now this is really interesting. This is something I wanted to talk about uh, previously, but the, the videos are all so dense. Uh, notice when when Danny does escape the ropes, right? A lot of times Golovkin will throw like a really a huge power shot. Um, or he throws that, you know, super powerful jab, and there's no follow-up. But usually when he lands it, it just pushes Danny back, or he'll do two of them or three of them. Um, but here he throws a, a right hook, and I think he's trying to get Danny to, to back up to the ropes again, um, or to the corner. Um, and uh, maintain ring generalship. And I think that that's one of his tactics for always being in command of the ring, is people being so wary of his power shots that they instinctively move back. And I think right there he catches him with a good shot, and then Danny catches him with a good shot. But Danny stops falling for it about right here, and he starts taking a stand. And I think that was one of the keys for Danny doing so well in the last round. I didn't point it out. I kind of actually abandoned a lot of the film study part of it um, and strategy, but it's... It winds up being really huge and pivotal for the way that you score this round. Um, but let's keep moving forward.
Danny gaining real estate, not even throwing punches, but Golovkin's very wary, very responsible defense, and, and moves back. I think he lands that jab. Um, I have a list of all the punches that I clocked in and the scoring um, at the end of the video. I'll have it in the video description. I'm not going to go over every single punch, but um, but you can see it. And these the times are actually the, the time in the round, not the time in the video. Um, I'm not very good at this stuff, but... Um, and again, uh, Golovkin uh, countering him, throwing a big shot, but Danny not respecting it, not moving back, uh, and counters him and catch, lands a great, a great hook right there. More baiting. Again, Golovkin throwing a jab, not used to Danny just bodying up with him and not giving the ring back. And Danny's maintaining ring generalship. You know, he he hasn't held on to that title, ring general, for very long during the course of this fight. But he's definitely working towards that right now. Again, throwing punches. He, they're not even landing, but he's maintaining ring generalship. And it's really important for the way that this, this round winds up being scored by the judges. Um, I'm not sure that's a body shot. You know, it lands on his shoulder. Um, this body shot that he throws, I definitely don't think lands with the left. And then that right hand, I think that's a good shot. It's not hard. And then that left definitely misses. Um, very good, responsible defense right there. He throws uh, his punch, shifts, and then bends down. And he doesn't wind up getting hit by the Golovkin counter. Um, so Danny's making some great adjustments so far. And he misses, Danny, uh, Golovkin misses the counter right there. You see it. It comes really late, though. Again, another just random hard shot that he doesn't set up after the break. Uh, but Danny is not having any of it. He's not allowing him to create space with these punches. Uh, and he maintains ring generalship. You know, it's pretty even between him and Golovkin, but good shots from, um, from both fighters there, I think. Golovkin lands... Uh, or misses his jab, Danny lands his. For some reason, Danny, every single time he's thrown that right hand, um, he's missed it. You know, it's it, every single time, all through the fight, he's never been able to get it on him, really. Uh, and he's never adjusted how he throws it. Anyway, this is one of the, r the rare examples, after throwing a combination, that Golovkin gets control of, um, of Danny during the course of this round uh other than that he kind of just lets danny do whatever he wants but in this exchange right here he's able to get his hands on him boom throws a good a good like scraping left hook and i think he gets another one right here and then but then he also eats one of his own um overall the exchange favors golovkin i think but um you can see a lot of the adjustments that Danny's making throughout the course of this fight um, play out in this round. And he's he's still doing really well. Oh, okay, we got to take a look at that stuff. Well, let's finish this one out. Um, another little cross from Golovkin. I think that that lands. I think that kind of bounces off of Danny's forehead, you know, like kind of a grazing shot that one hits him kind of on the forehead also grazing and then i think that that uppercut lands you can see the the glove on danny's maybe it only touches his shoulder and a little bit on the cheek um that body shot's blocked and then i have this right hand landing for jacobs and that left uppercut landing for Jacobs, too. And as you notice right there, Glovkin has no control over Danny. And Danny, after eating that shot, because he's not moving away like he used to and giving up ring generalship after he takes a shot, uh, he's standing there and countering. Um, he's able to land these punches, and I don't think that Glovkin's, you know, super wary of it. Uh, I think that shot misses. Let's see. Yeah, it just hits his glove. Kind of looks like it might have landed, but I don't think so at all. Falls in. Again, Glovkin throwing a shot, 
falling in, not able to back Danny up. Um, and even though Golovkin's definitely doing the better work, that uppercut, that uppercut looked really good, but it's actually right on the glove. You can see it. Well-placed and great defense from Golovkin, even though Golovkin kind of shuffles and falls off balance a little bit. Nothing there. And there's a, a left hook on the way out. Again, Golovkin's not controlling him in these in these engagements. You know, that might land with the knuckles. It's not a hard shot. And Golovkin's, even though it seems pretty even, Danny Jacobs has, you know, at least equal ownership of the ring. Uh, Golovkin's shots are still like the more clean and hard punches. Um, and he's he's still dictating a lot of the fight. Trying to rough him up, stop him from tying him up again. I think he lands that one too. Now look at this. Like, we're going to do this in slow-mo. I've clocked Danny. So he slips that. I get Danny landing only two punches in here. In real time, it lands. looks like he lands three, but he misses that one, misses that one. Golovkin gets his glove in the way of one of those. And then right here is where it gets kind of hairy because you can't really tell if this right hand lands or it's bouncing off the shoulder, but you see his hair move, which is not a good indication, right? Then that one, which hits his shoulder and his glove, makes his hair move and looks like a real punch. Um, and then that jab, obviously the ending jab, but look at the defense on Golovkin. Like, he navigates this so well. Boom, bodies up, still throwing punches. He's stepping back, rolling, gets his... Ooh. And he had just such great defense. So you can see Golovkin get his glove in front of that one so he doesn't get to hit him with it. Great defense. And you just... You can't really tell if it lands. I think I give him credit for it in um, in my breakdown. Uh, and then credit for that last one. But let's watch that in real time. Also, we'll, we'll, we'll watch it in slow-mo again one, t one more time. Um, so he slips, throws his counter, keeps his arm in Golovkin's chest. We're talking about what um, Danny's doing right this time. I forgot to mention it. Uh, holds in there so he knows where he is. He might even land that first left hook, but not like a solid punch. Throws another counter. Shifts with Golovkin. Puts his arm on him. Knows where he is. Controlling him. Throws the straight left, which misses. Shifts with him again. Gets his forearm in his face. Throws the right. Throws the left. And then now while this is a jab, it is, it's more like controlling him on the way out. So great defense from Golovkin um, and great, great control from Danny right there uh, throughout the, the course of all those, those punches. Watch it one more time. And none of those punches are like very serious punches, right? And that's why it's hard to say, oh, he gets credit for all this offense because you know, they're not huge scoring blows. And so far, nothing he's done this round has been as good as anything that Golovkin has done. Oh, man. But look at that. Look at this. And this is, the, this is exactly why you, you want to control your opponent after you punch. Otherwise, you wind up in um, really poor situations like this one for Golovkin. He kind of gets hit with a cuffing shot. Uh, and it knocks Golovkin off balance. He hops forward and right into a right hand from Danny and then a left hook from Danny. Uh, great shots. And the bell rings about right here, and that like slides off his shoulder and doesn't land either. Um, now Danny wants to get all in his face or whatever. But we're going to take a look at the, uh, the highlights from the... From that exchange, see, so knocks him off balance, and he eats a he eats a shot himself. Um, but also, if if he hadn't cuffed him with that shot, maybe Golovkin could have knocked him out with that, or caught him with a big 
painful shot of his own, but he's not controlling him. Eats a big shot, not controlling him again. Eats a big shot. Uh, and that's exactly why it's important to always maintain control of your opponent. After you punch, move off of at angles. You really got to do something to stop your opponent from landing huge punches. Um, now, as far as how to score this, I think that Glovekin had the better defense. I think they kind of shared ring generalship. Um, the clean effect of punches, I think I have... I have Glovkin landing 20 shots and Jacob landing 16, but those last two punches were just so much bigger of a shot than anything Glovkin landed in that round. I think it's it's a toss-up at the moment between just being a, a, a tie round, 10-10 for me, um, and giving it to Jacobs uh, based just off of, I'll say it, Glovkin's lack of control him, uh, control on him in that round, uh, kind of giving Jacobs the ability to athlete himself into winning it. So I'm gonna give it with to Jacobs. It's a close round, a very competitive round. Uh, but also notice that Glovkin isn't. I don't know why. I haven't figured this part out yet. But Glovkin stopped using his double jab to control Jacobs. Uh, and stop him from countering him, to stop him from bodying him up. Notice earlier in the fight, he would jab and then kind of faint a little bit with his second jab to control him. And when he would get him to stutter, uh, he would land a big shot and probe for offense. Uh, he, he would do a lot of good things off of that, but he didn't do a lot of that in this round. Um, so I got to give it to, to Jacobs for sure. Um, anyway, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, let me know what you guys want to see um, as far as breakdowns and whatever. Um, anyway, 12th round coming up. Thanks, guys.